Hi everyone. In this particular video, I'll be going over the manual approach to OAuth authentication. I'll be using Spotify as an example of how to set this up. This approach can be used when you require a little more flexibility than the approach that is supported by the native authentication flow in Bubble's API connector. As this is a more complex approach, I've written below the steps that I would undertake when I'm setting up any kind of manual approach to OAuth authentication. The first step is always to read the API documentation and understand the OAuth flow. The second step is to set up the app settings. In the case of Spotify, I would go to the Spotify for Developers dashboard and I'd set up an app application. And this would provide me with a client ID and a client secret, which I would exchange in our authorization flow. The third step is to determine the required authorization scopes. And this simply defines the information that we can receive from the Spotify's users. Next, I'll set up the actual authorization code flow. So this is the process of building the calls in the API connector. This has many sub steps. The first one is to request the user authorization. So what we do is we send a user to an authentication URL. In the example of Spotify, they would be able to log into their Spotify account here. Then it will go to a page where it defines and shows what kind of information our application wants to receive from Spotify and the user can approve or deny this. If they approve it, the user will be then redirected to a URL on our page and will be provided with an authorization code as a parameter in that URL. We will then use this authorization code and make an API call to receive an access token and a refresh token from Spotify. The refresh token may not be present in all OAuth authentication flows, but it is present for Spotify. We will then also set up an API call to receive a refreshed access token using the refresh token. This is required if the access token has an expiry time or a limited period of use. And again, in the example of Spotify, this is true. We will then set up an example API call using the access token we received and I will show you the process of how to receive particular information from Spotify. And then finally, I'm gonna bring all of this together and I'll build these workflows in the editor, going over that process of building that login page, going to Spotify, approving the information, and then us receiving the access token and displaying the Spotify information on the page. Next, I'm gonna jump over to the API documentation for Spotify. I'm in the authorization section of the API documentation for Spotify, which gives me an overview of how OAuth 2 is implemented by Spotify. I'm gonna jump over to the app settings section here. And this section of this guide will give me an overview of how to create, update, and delete a new app. And it's gonna give me that client ID and client secret that I need to authorize any of the flows with Spotify. And if I go through this here, it's a really detailed guide, and I'll just go over to my dashboard. So I've opened this already here, which is the Spotify for Developers dashboard. Anyone can really log in and access this content by just applying to be a developer. I'll create a new application and I'll call it test bubble application. And I will write, this is a test as a description. I'll then create this. And what I can see now here is that my client ID is here and I can show my client secret and get my client secret that I require. What I also want to do is I want to edit the settings and what I can update is my website, but also my redirect URI. And these are whitelisted addresses to redirect the user to after authentication, success or failure. Now, this won't be immediately clear right now what this means, but I'll set it up and I'll go into a little bit more detail later in the video. So I'll go back to my bubble application and I'll add a new one and I will call it um, redirect and I will create this. And what I want to do is I simply want to preview this page and just copy this URL right here. I'll jump back and I will add in that URL. And what I also want to do is I want to add in the live version of the the URL. So I'll remove that and I'll add that in and then I will save that. So now I have set up step two of the manual approach to OAuth authentication. 
So now I'm going to move over to step three here, which is determining the required authorization scope. So I'll go back to the API documentation here and click authorization scopes. So what really is this authorization scope? It's simply a mechanism in OAuth 2, which limits an application's access to the user's account. So any scope that I ask or require access to the user account, this will be presented to the user in their consent screen, and then they can approve or deny any kind of access to these scopes. And what I can see here is an overview of the scopes available to me in Spotify. And the way I decide which scopes that I require is really dependent on my use case. So for this particular use case or really common use case with OAuth 2 is I want to set up a new user account in Bubble using the information that's provided to me from my Spotify account because they're logging in through Spotify. So what I actually want to be able to do is I want the user's um, information such as their first name and their last name and also their email address so I can sign the user up. So I'll click that here which is this scope, user read email. And what it gives me is it gives me read access to the user's email and I can get the current user's profile if I have this scope access. And the access token I, I receive later will be limited to only this particular scope. And this is the authorization scope that I'm really looking for. So I'll go back to here and we can see that we've completed step three now. So the next section is step four, which is the authorization code flow. And I'm going to go over this now, including building the calls in the API connector. And I'm starting with step A here, which is requesting the user authorization. So what we want to do is we want to send the user to an authentication URL where they can log into their Spotify account and then approve our bubble application to access that data. So what I will do is I'll jump over to the API documentation and I will open in a new tab, authorization code flow. And if I scroll through this, this is just giving me an overview of the code flow to set up this OAuth. And I can see this section of request user authorization. So the first step is to request authorization from the user. So that login, um, so that we can access Spotify resources on behalf of that user. So we've got to send a get request to this authorize endpoint. And we need the following parameters, client ID, response type, redirect URA and then other optional ones. And we want to add in the scope here or the authorization scope we found from before. Um, if I go further down, I can see a JavaScript code example. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply just going to copy this one as this is the authorized endpoint. And it just makes my life a little bit easier to copy that, that start. And I will paste that in here. And I'll just paste that here and now, if I go back to the authorization code flow and I go back to the parameters, I can see that I need to add a parameter, which is client ID. So let me copy that one and I'll write that in there. And then I'll set client ID equal to, so I'll go back to here, which is my Spotify for developers app dashboard from the app settings that I set up before. And I'll copy this client ID as this is the the one that I've set up for my application and I'll paste that in here. The next thing I need is my response type. So my response type has to be set to code. So when I add a new parameter, I put in the and symbol and then I write in that parameter and I set it equal to code. Now I have another one which is redirect your RI. So let me let me copy this one and paste that in. And then I want to set that equal to the redirect URI, which I set up before. So in my edit settings, I can see this one and I'll just copy the version test for now. And I will then add an and, and I will add the final one, which is the scope. So I'll add that in here and I will go back to the authorization scopes and copy this one as this is the particular scope that I was really after. And I will write that equals and I will set that up. And now what I want to do is I want to test if this is working. So I'll create a new tab and add that in just there. And one second. And if I go back to this tab, I can see that it has gone to the Spotify login page. So I'll just log in. Now that I have logged in, I can see this is the name of my application, test bubble application, and you agree that this application will be able to view your Spotify account data, 
which is this particular scope that I have provide access to, and then I can agree to it as a user. Um, and if I go back to here, what I've shown now is how to set up step 4A, which is how to request that user authorization. So now I'll go on to step 4B, which is the receiving the authorization code as a parameter in the redirect URL. And I'll just visually explain what this is and how this comes about. And then this will allow me to go to step 4C, where I make the API call and exchange this authorization code I've received in step 4B for an access token and a refresh token. So what I'll do now is I'll log into my Spotify account here. So I'm just here and I'll agree to allowing this application to access my data. And now what this has done is it sent me back to my redirect URI, which is the redirect page here. And then now after this, you can see that a code parameter has been appended to that URL. So if I go here, you can see that there is this code. So this code is actually the authorization code that we're going to use as a parameter in step 4C. So that's how to do step 4B. So next I'm going to show how to make an API call to exchange the authorization code we received. So this code here for an access token and a refresh token. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back to the API documentation and scroll down to the section, which is request access token here. Um, I can see that what I need to do is I need to make a post request to the endpoint API token and the body of this post request must have the following parameters encoded in this particular format. And the body parameters are grant type code and redirect URI. And if I scroll down further, I can see that the request must include the following HTTP headers, so authorization and content type. And for authorization, it's a base64 encoded string of the client ID and client secret. So the key here is authorization and the value is basic space client ID colon client secret in a base64 format. So let me set that up now. So if I jump over to my API connector here and I click add another API, I can write this in as Spotify. I can expand this one and I can set up an API call. Let's call it token request and it should be a post call to the token endpoint. So I need to get the token endpoint and what I'll do is I'll just copy it from the code example here. So that base endpoint URL and what I also need to do is I need to add the headers. So going back to here, we've got the authorization header parameter. I'll pop that in here. Next, I need to do this base64 encoding. So I need the client ID and client secret. So I'm going to copy my client ID and my client secret from my Spotify for developers test bubble application that I set up before. So I have my client ID here, which I will copy and I will go to this website, which is base64 encode. And what it allows me to do is to simply encode any string into a base64 format. So I'll pop in the client ID. I'll put a colon there. I will copy my client secret, pop it in there, and I will encode. I will copy this one and go back to here. And if from memory, you write basic and then that base64 encoded format, then the next parameter should be content type. So content type, and that is the value that it should have. So I'll pop that in here. Next, I want to add my body parameters. So if I scroll up, I can see that these body parameters have to be added and has to be in this particular format. So if I jump back to my application here, I can see that the format supported aren't exactly the same format that is displayed here. So what I'm going to choose is I'm going to choose JSON, but I'm also going to show or display the format in a particular way, which makes sure that it's encoded correctly. So if I go back, the first parameter that I want to pop in is code. And the way I'm going to write this is I'm going to pop in and code, and then I'm going to set it to equals this one and then underscore asterisk underscore code underscore asterisk underscore this one and that will allow me to set the the value dynamically and also ensure that it will be correctly encoded so i'm just copying the code value i received before into here the next one that i need to add is the redirect 
URI. So let me pop that in in the same manner. So I will write an and, I'll pop that in, and then I'll pop that in as an equals. I'll copy this across and rewrite this as pop URI there. And what I'll do is I'll copy the redirect URI that we have here there, and I'll pop that in as my value. And then I have one more, which was grant type. And I will go back here. I'll pop in the grant type. I'll pop in the equals. And I will change that to grant and the value should be authorization code. And if I go back to here, an authorization code and I will initialize the call. So you can see here that my authorization code has expired. So essentially what has happened is that this particular code only has validity for a set period of time. So after I logged in, I was received this code. Um, but what it has happened is that in this particular example, it's already expired. So what I need to do now is I need to reset this code. So all I need to do is I go back to this and I log in again. So I'm logging in again and I've got an, a new updated code which I can use to set up and initialize my call on the real in real terms when I'm actually going through this flow that issue shouldn't be prevalent as the API call to do go from 4b to 4c will happen almost instantaneously but when I'm setting it up it's just something to keep in mind and I will pop that in now and I will initialize the call and I can see that I've received the following data which is my access token the token type of bearer uh, there's an expiry, so it expires in 3,600 seconds. I have a refresh token and I also have the scope that's provided. I'm just going to copy this information as I want to use it to set up some of my other calls. And I will save this. And that is how to go through step 4C. Now I'm going to go through section 4D, which is setting up an API call to receive a refreshed access token using the refresh token. This is required if the access token has an expiry time. So if we see down here to the body response that we received, it expires in 3,600 seconds. So essentially after 60 minutes, this access token is no longer valid. And we need to use or provide this refresh token to the API to receive back a new access token to actually access this user's data. So Let's get into this. So if I go back to the API documentation and I scroll down to uh, this section, which is request a refresh access token. Again, I can see that it's a post request in that same body encoded format as previously. These are the two following body parameters that are required. And it requires the exact same headers as before. So this one I can just set up pretty much based off the information that I set up previously. So I will set up a refresh token post and it should be to the exact same endpoint as well, which I can see that it is here. And if I just that, pop that in here and it needed the two same headers. So what I can just do is I can copy this header pop that in here, copy this header, there, copy this header. Yep. And if I go back to here, it has the following two body parameters. So let me pop these two back in to here. So using the exact same format that I had before. And what I will do is I will just copy that. And then I will also copy that. I will change this to my correct key, which is refresh token. And I will pop that there. So for the grant, I need it to 
be set to the refresh token. And for the code, I need it to be set to my refresh token here. And if I initialize the call, I can see that I have received a new access token with a new expiry time. So I'm just going to copy that and paste this here for my future reference. What you can actually also notice is that there is no refresh token provided. So some APIs will provide you with a new refresh token so that the next time you need to get a new access token because it has expired, you need to provide this new refresh token. But in the case of this Spotify API, I can just always use that same refresh token to receive a new access token. So if I reinitialize this call again, and then I show the raw data, I can see that I actually have a new access token again. And this is my no, most recent access token. And this access token is different to the one that I have here. So that is how to set up part 4D. So now I'm going to go to part 4E, which is simply setting up an example API call using the access token we received. So if I go back to my documentation here, the Spotify documentation, and I scroll down to the bottom, and I go to what's next here, which is how to use the access token guide. So what this provides me with is simply an example of how to use this access token. So what I need to do is I need to do an API call and add this header parameter of authorization, and then the valid access token in the format bearer access token. So let's set this up. So this is a get call for the get a track endpoint, and this is the URL. So let's add a call, and let's call this get a track. And this is the ID of a particular track. And then I will pop in authorization, and then bearer, and let's pop in the most recent access token we have, which is this one down the bottom, which is from the refreshed token. And I'll put the space and I'll initialize the call. And I can see that this call is now working. So looking here, it's returned to me a list of two album tracks here, and I can save that. So if I didn't have this particular code and I attempted to initialize the call, it would say that only valid bearer authentication is supported. So let me just pop that back in and initialize it and save it. So that is the process of 4E. So that's just how to set up an example API call using the access token that we have received. So now I'm going to go to step 4F, which is simply bringing it all together and going through all the steps that we've done and building this exact workflow in the editor. So as an overview, uh, when a user logs lands on our page, there'll be a login which will redirect them to their Spotify login. It'll send them to the authentication URL that we set up before. Once they log in, they'll be sent back to a redirect page on our application where they'll receive an authorization code as a parameter in the redirect URL. We're going to capture that code and then exchange it for an access token from Spotify and also a refresh token. We'll then set up an example API call using the access token we received to pull data from Spotify. And also in that same um, workflow, we're going to set up a conditional statement where we will access a refreshed access token using our refresh token if the current access token has expired. So now let's get into it. So I'm on my bubble editor. And what I want to set up here is that login. So I will pop a link here. Just simply login. And I want it to redirect to an external URL, which is this authorize authentication URL. And I want to make a small change here. So you can see the redirect URL is hard coded to the version test environment. So what I would like to do is I want to update this. And I don't want it to be hard coded. I want it to be website home URL. And the reason why I want it to do that is whether we're in the test environment or the live environment, it will always provide the website home URL or that base 
URL which accounts for that. And we don't need to switch or update this URL as we're pushing to live or when we're in the test environment. And it makes our lives a bit easier. So the next step now is the user would access this login link that would be sent to Spotify, they'd log in, and then they're sent to our redirect page where their authorization code is sent as a parameter in the URL. So we want to capture that and we want to make an API call. So let me go to the redirect page here. Something that I do need to do is I'll go back to my plugins here and we can see all my API calls I've set up previously and they all use the API calls as data and we actually want to use them as an action. The reason why we want to use them as actions is I want these to appear for me in my workflow tab so I can make these calls in the workflow. So I'll do this. So when, when the page is loaded, so the page is loaded when a user is redirected to this, I want to make a call to get the access token. So that's my Spotify access token. What I also want to be able to do is <clears throat> I want this particular code to be dynamic. So that code is going to be my authorization code that I received as a parameter in the URL. So I want to dynamically update this using data from page URL. So it'll be a parameter and the parameter name will be code. And we know this because when we look at it here, we can see the parameter name is code and then it's equal to this code. So we want to use that. So that's step one. Step two is we want to save this information. So I want to make changes to current user. And I want to save the access token. I want to save the refresh token. And I also want to set an expiry time. So I'm going to set that to current date and time plus seconds expires in. So we know that Spotify provides us as 3,600 seconds. So we want the current date or time plus seconds um, which will provide uh, of 3,600, which will provide us with an overview of when the expiry time exactly is. So we can do a conditional workflow um, a little bit later. The next thing I want to do is I want to redirect the user from this page back to the Spotify page. Okay. So now let's follow this flow. So let's go back to the Spotify page. And the next step, as we can remember here, is I want to set up an example API call using the access token we received. And I also want to make that conditional statement to get a refreshed access token using the refresh token if it's past the expiry time. So let's set that up. So I'm on this page here and I want to do a when page is loaded. So when the page is loaded, I want to get the track information. So if I go back to my plugins here, I want to untick this as I want this particular code to be unique to this particular user. Oh. Current users access token. Perfect. And what I want to do before that is I want to do a conditional workflow to check if the access token has expired. So what I will do is I will set up a call to get the Spotify refresh token. And if I go back to my plugins and I'm on refresh token, I know that I want this to be my personal refresh token. <clears throat> and I can do current users refresh token. But I only want this to occur when the current date and time is greater than current users expiry time. So when this is occur, that means that the current access token has expired and we need to get a new token. And then what we also need to do is we need to make changes to the current user's access token and also to the current user's expiry time. 
and it's going to be the result of step one's that, and it's going to be current date of time plus seconds, and then it's going to be result of step one's expires in, and this also is going to have the exact same expression here. The next thing we want to do is we want to actually display this information on our page just to make sure that it is working. So I'll set up a repeating group. Uh, I'll make it get track album artist. I'll put in some text, such as the name. External URLs, Spotify. And we don't have the data source set up here. So what I will do is I will display the list in the repeating group and I will do it as <clears throat> there we go. So let's test this flow now. So I'm on here, I'm on my preview page and let me preview that one. Perfect, and then I'll log in. Yep, and I can see the data is now being displayed. So that brings us to the end of this particular video. Now, a caveat that I want to put on this video or the, the setup and the workflows on this video from a security perspective is that this approach is completely fine if each user is accessing their own data. So in this particular example, every user is accessing data which is unique to them. In the case of they log into their Spotify account and they receive a access token and, and a bearer token which is unique to them. But the way that we have these workflows set up currently means that any user when they're making these API calls can actually view the, the access and the bearer token from their browser. They will then be able to use this access token to make other API calls to view other parts of the data within the scopes that are provided. Now, again, that isn't an issue for this particular approach that is set up, but if you have a different use case where the user is accessing someone else's data or using the app owner's data and the app owner's access tokens, that can re result in a bit of a security issue. And there are setups and different workflows and ways to set it up so that the access token isn't actually displayed on the browser, but that is outside the remit of this particular video, but it's just an important caveat that's important to bear in mind when you're setting up this particular workflow so that you understand the security implications. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below this video.